I'm delighted to say we've got Andy McGinley with us to help us preview the Dublin Tyrone game. And we're having a debate here about um, which team both sides should put out, given that it's effectively a dead rubber. They both know they're going through to the semi finals. And there's not a whole heap of difference between who you want to play in the next round. You don't really know what the story is uh, yet. You will know, obviously, by the time throw in happens. But what's your gut instinct about what team Tyrone should play? Should they play their strongest team and try and win, or do they hold something in reserve? I think they have to hold something in reserve. I think going all out to beat Dublin takes a massive, massive effort. It takes a pretty special environment in, in the dressing room to be created with boys ready to do absolutely everything or whatever it takes to, to get over the line to try and take on Dublin or take down Dublin. Uh, you're trying to recover from that effort in six, seven days to play in a Lyon semi-final. And no matter how the result goes, if you win, does it really tell you an awful lot? Is it worth a huge amount? It's, it's a nice boost, surely. It's a nice wee feather in the cap but it doesn't get you any further forward. Uh, if you lose, like the Leinster finalists that lose against Dublin, it's exceptionally hard to recover. Now, me have done it this year, but it's exceptionally hard to recover and to take on a Ireland semi-final. Uh, I just don't see the benefit with it. I think the draw or the way the groups have worked out have handed both Throne and Dublin a, a, a nice wee advantage over the, the teams coming through from the other group. I cannot for the life of me see why the teams would choose to ignore that and go absolutely hell for leather at each other and particularly for Tyrone. Dublin obviously probably have a wee bit to spare over most teams but Tyrone won't have anything to spare over whoever they're playing in the other semi-final so uh, from a team point of view I think Mickey Hart will still want to be competitive he will not be able to go out and not want to try to win this game but I think simple things like does he play Petey Hart who's carrying the two black cards that weren't overturned under the appeal if he gets a further black card, then that messes up the week's preparation with appeals and all of that sort of talk and distraction coming into the Lyon semi-final. Uh, does he play Cattle McShane at full forward? Them's probably the two big calls for me that he has to make. I personally wouldn't play Petey Hart and I wouldn't play Cattle McShane at full forward. Uh, I just don't see the benefit of giving Trone or giving Dublin a dry run at trying to mark what is essentially Trone's point of difference or Trone's key weapon this year. Like I, I see the merits in that argument, and, uh, and I've a feeling that you're right here. I think most people are actually getting behind that idea. But the more I think about it, and I look at some of the Tyrone voices, especially in the aftermath of last year's All-Ireland Final, Colm Kavanagh was saying that they went a few points up early in the game, and they couldn't quite believe it. They couldn't quite believe that they had that fairly sizable lead at that point against one of the best teams we've ever seen. Like, how do you change that mentality? One way to do that is actually beating them and getting that win under your belt. It doesn't matter if it's dead rubber. Actually coming off the pitch, having beaten Dublin, surely that would change the mentality if they were to meet them in an All-Ireland Final again, if they were to build up an early lead again. Again, they might be able to handle it a little bit better. It it will if Dublin are fully out. Uh, the other thing it, it would do, it would damage Dublin's reputation because if Dublin go fully out and Tyrone beat them, it sort of rekindles this whole notion about how much of an advantage it is to them to be playing in Croke Park all the time. I think that will be a, an, an aspect in, in the Dublin mentality coming into this game. But for Tyrone, I, I think just going purely on result. I think most teams now, particularly at the top level, they, they will look at many, many factors and markers within a game to, to determine their own level of performance rather than just the actual finishing scoreline. So for Trone against Dublin, it gives them an opportunity to come up against that pace and power and, and, and athleticism that Dublin have and to feel that in real time again in midsummer will help prepare them for any potential alarm final if the two teams uh, progress. It also gives them a chance to do one of two things. Mickey Hart has tried the defensive blanket against Dublin many times. It has failed many times, uh, but he's went back to that this year. Is he going to stick with it? It gives him a great chance to say, right boys, we're going to do a Mourinho here. We're going to park the bus, uh, go out and try to defend and defend against this Dublin forward line. They are the team that just make no mistakes, which is what the blanket defence depends upon. But let's really use this as the best possible training exercise as the ultimate test of our blanket defence to see has it changed any or is it a definite dead duck. On the other side, last year in the Iron Final, he went essentially pushed up, went more man-to-man -man in Dublin than he had in any previous game that year. And that's a big change for the team to take on. They done it well for 20 minutes, it then started to fall apart. Does he decide, right, that's how I'm going to play Dublin if I'm going to play Dublin this year? Wait, well, then we'll go man-to-man -man and that gives us a brilliant practice run again. 
and really look at how men cope with that man-to-man system and see where it breaks down. So Trone can pick one of two ways of, of going at this game and then look for the markers, look for how they're performing in that, take real learning lessons from that. You learn nothing unless you go at the game in a in a in as flat out sense as you can. But I think with just tweaking your personnel here and there, it means that you're maybe not going absolutely a full out for the win. You're keeping something in reserve, and that means if you win, well, bonus. You know you've still something in reserve to come. If you lose, you know that well we weren't absolutely full out, so it gives you a bit of a psychological buffer. To, to head into the semi-final. So it's like a, a challenge match on steroids, basically, where you're you're attempting to learn as much as you possibly can. Uh, uh, absolutely. This this is this is unfortunately shadow boxing. There is it's real intrigue. I'm fascinated to see Jim Gavin what what his approach is going to be. If Jim Gavin goes full out for this game, to me that is starting to let the mask slip a wee bit. In that. He, he always says he respects every opponent and every opponent gets the fullness of respect and every opponent, particularly the big teams left, he would see a, he would talk as if they're on the same level as Dublin. If he honestly fears the semi-final, not fears, but certainly fully, fully respects the semi-final opponent that's coming down the line, he will be looking to rest key players. I can't see why Jim Gavin going for the five in a row would risk all of his key players for the full of this match with a semi-final coming down the road in six days' time, potentially. Uh, if he does that, that shows a man that is fully confident, that is more determined to have his team hammering everybody in a pretty ruthless fashion and marching emphatically to a five in a row. And Jim Gavin doesn't really go down that sort of route in, in, in terms of approach. Uh, so if he does respect every opponent I think he has to rest some of his key players at least during the game take off some of them key men that he has the likes of Kilkenny the likes of Fenton uh, p- people like that there give them a rest for the last 20-25 minutes that's not Jim Gavin's style but I think if he's serious about his semi-final opponents and does fear them then I, I think he should be doing that Do you think that he'll have a decision to make come Saturday night do you think he'll be looking at whatever it may be Kerry Donegal or Mayo and saying to himself I want that one Hey, no, I, I, I don't think that'll come in. That he'll, he, like, obviously, having, having the record he has, he'll fully believe he'll beat whoever it is there. And in terms of this team's, this, this team is on a historic mission. It is cementing its reputation, is doing all of them things. And away loss, their first championship loss uh, during that run, and an, in an away game in Oma, uh, wouldn't. Uh, wouldn't help this team's reputation. I think even if they went on to five in a row, that would be an annoying niggle, an annoying wee tarnish on, on, on a remarkable legacy of the team. Uh, I think Jim Gavin is in a position to be to believe that his team can uh, win this straight the way they have done every other year, not losing to anybody. I don't think they'll have any intention at all of losing the, the, the game in Oma, uh, no matter who that potentially lines up in the semi-final. I, I, don't believe that'll come into it, but uh, he's still that decision to make. How much is he going to rest his players? How 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 emphatically does he want to prove that the away game thing doesn't matter to Dublin that they'll beat that they are capable of beating anybody anywhere, as they've shown over the previous years? Does it so? Does he go flat out with the whole team for the whole game and hammer Tyrone potentially, if he really really wanted to, uh, particularly if Tyrone aren't going full out? Uh, so them, them's the wee choices Gavin has, and then of course there's the German Connolly everlasting circus uh, to to keep everybody interested too. So the match itself, I, I think it'll be a surreal challenge match affair, as you say, Jer. Uh, but the intrigue in terms of the manager's decisions is probably what's what's keeping us all uh, keep keeping us all talking about the game. If you're Dublin, you must be a little bit concerned about the fact that you haven't had a proper test this year against a proper Tier 1 team. And this was supposed to be it, where you got to exactly test yourself against another side who are are going all out. And that's now not the case. So no matter what happens this weekend, really, I think Dublin are going to be a little bit anxious before a semi-final against Mayo or Donegal or Kerry. I think Mayo particularly would certainly have a little bit of room to just get inside the Dublin psyche for that week and go, she haven't played anybody this year, lads. This is going to be your first game of the whole, the whole season. Yeah, I think uh, I, would, I would put Kerry in that bracket too. You really don't know just where is the level of this Kerry team. You, you know by looking at that forward line that they have huge potential. 
Uh, and if they are defensively solid, I think they're, they're a massive threat to Dublin. So, yes, any team will be aware that they haven't been fully tested. But a team that we, we're, we're not talking about any team. We're not talking about any team that we have any comparison with down over the years in terms of the number of games that they've played, the, the dominance of them games, the dominance of the wins uh, over National League and Championship over, over the past four to six years. Uh, the experience of the squad, the age profile of the squad, by the time Kerry, the last team, were getting to this stage, their squad was getting older, they had a lot of miles in the clock. Dublin aren't in that category, so we, we do not have a comparison for this Dublin team. In terms of whether they fear opponents, I would imagine that Dublin team is bound to be relishing a tight game at this stage. They're bound to be bored of not having a proper challenge coming down the last 10-15 minutes now. Maybe you get into the mindset that that's, that's what you're used to and to snap out of that would be difficult and to snap out of that with the sudden pressure, like say in the semi-final, if they suddenly find themselves going down, maybe a point down going into the last five minutes and suddenly the pressure of the five in a row would come hurtling down the tracks at them. Uh, so yes, coming into that scenario, they would prefer a bit of a test, but bottom line, they don't, no matter what, way this game goes it'll be a bit of a test but it's it's going to be a 90 percent test both teams I, I don't care what both teams are going to be at 90 percent they can't be full out mentally they can't be full out for this game knowing that it doesn't really matter and knowing that a massive game is one week away so even if this game is tight and competitive it doesn't say to dublin you've had a tight and competitive game you're now ready for the semi-final because it is shadow boxing this 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 weekend no matter how the managers try to dress it up We've spoken about the potential tactical quirk that Mickey Hart may have up his sleeve this weekend. Is there anything that Dublin will want to be keeping under wraps? I, I, I don't think Dublin have, have changed massively over the years. I think they are exactly as you see them, they're, they're, from their kick-out strategy to their uh, ability to keep ball. They seem to be hitting a bit more long ball the last day. Whether that remains a factor re remains to be seen in, in terms of their, their type of play this weekend. Their use of the men off the bench will be interesting uh, in terms of, you'd imagine Jim Gavin's going to be given the three, four men that he thinks are going to be important in that super sub role, uh, which he likes to use game time. That obviously includes the likes of Connolly. If we don't see him, then it's hard to see him having, having any time at all over the coming Coming games. Would you start him so this from weekend? From a Dublin point of view, I'm, you, I'm not expecting anything new. Would you start Dermot Connolly this weekend just to kind of see exactly where he's at so he gets the pipes cleaned? No, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't start him. I think that'd be a slap in the face and would be against Jim Gavin's previous uh, chat about how you work your way up through the the squad and get your chance. If he's went very well, I'm sure they've had a few more sort of in-house mini games and stuff like that. So if he's been going very well in that, then I'd imagine he'll have earned 20, 25 minutes. And that's, that would be ideal from a Dublin point of view. No, nobody's expecting German Connolly to push into the, the Dublin first 15 in the remaining games. The wonder is, is he going to be an impact sub for 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, if, if the thing is really in the fire? It's hard to imagine that they would lose out the chance of a five in a row with German Connolly remaining unused, unless he's not showing well in training. And if he is going to be used, then I think this weekend presents the perfect opportunity uh, for him. Uh, so I can't imagine, and most people being aware of the situation, can't imagine that he just brought in there just just to bring him back. You're only bringing him back if you think there is a potential to be used. And if that potential is there, then he has to be given time this weekend. The, um, the Roscommon game last year is a bit of a template in terms of what Jim Gavin might do. He made 10 or 12 changes and a bunch of players made their only start of the year. Um, for the dubs and, and Bernard Brogan got time off the bench. Obviously he was coming back from a cruise ship, so it was a different scenario. So we do expect the dubs to make a, a significant number of changes this weekend. Having said all that, who do you think is actually going to win this game? I think Dublin. Uh, I'm, I'm not actually expecting just as, as, as big a raft of changes from them. I think Roscommon obviously present a different challenge to Dublin than Tyrone and, and up in Oma as well. Uh, I think the risk of losing this game is much higher. Uh, for Dublin if they don't approach it right because Mickey Hart whilst I, I think and I would hope he will change up some things and not go absolutely full out with his best game plan against Dublin this weekend uh, he still is ultra competitive he'll still be putting out a strong team and he'll still want that chance to beat Dublin uh, on home soil and I think 
the impact that that has just on the overall picture, the way this Dublin team is viewed, um, unless he does, unless Gavin does name a very weak inside, uh, then then obviously the result would have less merit. But I think it would still suggest that uh, Dublin just have this away from home thing. Like I watched them last year in Oma. I remember the game well, and Dublin just looked completely different out of Croke Park. They didn't look as as smooth or as as high level. Their their shooting was off compared to how it is in Croke Park. Obviously, different surroundings. They know the Croke Park pit so well, and when you bring them out of that, it is different. Uh, so I would love to see them sort of prove their point uh, this 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 weekend in, in in Oma and go out with a strong team. And I think Jim Gavin will. I don't think he'll want to suffer a, a championship defeat. One last thing, in terms of um, what Tyrone actually want for a semi-final, if you were to rank the three opponents, is it, uh, are Donegal the last opponent they want to see? Are Kerry the first opponent they, would they want to see? Just because they kind of have that whole um, team of the naughties thing to fall back on. What's the order? Yeah, good, good, good question. I, I think them three teams are, are so close. I think for, for me, Kerry would be ahead of them. Uh, at the minute, I think Tyrone and Donegal know each other so well that, that that'll be just a, a battle in the trenches. It's not a particularly appealing match for either team. Uh, Mayo are the unknown quantity, just Mayo's dangerous, and obviously Donegal have that to face this weekend. So depending on what Mayo you would face, if you would face the sort of the standard Mayo that hasn't been overly convincing this year, then you'd pick Mayo all day long as, as your opponent. Uh, but if they turn up with their with their A game, then suddenly that's a different proposition. But I would pick Mayo probably first. That means obviously a Donegal for me. I think that would mean Donegal are out. If it was between Mayo and Kerry, I'd be picking Mayo. I'd be wanting to avoid Kerry to be honest. I'd love to see Kerry get a crack at Dublin in the semi final, uh, and whoever Trone play in the other semi final, then uh, it would mean Dublin are facing at least two very difficult tests to complete the five in a row. Yeah. Good stuff, Enda. Thanks a million for joining us this morning. Enjoy the game. All the best.